If I haven't met you yet, my name is Shane Schlesman. Thank you for joining us. Hey, and if you're here in person, uh, I want to say you've got a perfect attendance in 2022. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You should thank yourself for that. Uh, that's really good. Uh, your perfect attendance in, in 2022. Um, we brought in the new year. You can tell uh, my voice is struggling a little bit this morning. I think I lost it celebrating uh, the new year. And uh, my son and his fiance are here. They got engaged last night. <clears throat> so congratulations, Brent and Casey. Uh, but I, I'll tell you, my voice got left in, in all the parties uh, last night. So uh, thank you uh, for your grace uh, this morning. So I know I, I, I kind of have a gravelly voice. If you're watching online and you're just joining us, like, it's it's not that different, okay? <laughs> I have a pretty gravelly voice anyway, but a little more gravelly this morning, uh, but thank you for your prayers this morning. I can't wait to begin this brand new series. If you're new to our church, this is our vision as a church, to see every person experience transformation through Jesus Christ. That's our vision to see every person experience transformation through Jesus Christ. And our, our, our vision to do that, that mission, that mission statement that guides us and says, this is the anchor, okay, this is our true north, but how we do that in our vision looks like this, to expand the family of God, to expand the family of God across all cultures and generations. We want to take you on a journey over the next few weeks to envision with us what it looks like to continue to expand this family. And if you're, you're part of our family, you're part of WEAG, we, we call this church family. This is family. And we want to learn what that looks like and how we can expand that because God doesn't just want you to be in the family of God. He wants others as well. And I want to invite you on a journey the next several weeks of what it looks like to envision uh, together. And week one, we desire to be a church that is growing always. In order to be a church that is growing always, we have to be a people that is growing always. A church is not an organization, although it is, it is an organism. It is the called out people of God. That's what a church is. And when, when the world shut down in 2020, we learned that it better be more than just about a building, right? It better be more than just about a church attendance. Church ought to be in the the people of God called out by him, living this out. That's what he desired. That's what Jesus prayed in John 17. Lord, would you bring them together in perfect unity? Would you show the world this called out group of people? And I want to envision together what it looks like for you and I to always, always be growing, to envision growing Always. And here's the passage I want us to look at in Philippians chapter 1. And it is my prayer, the Apostle Paul said to the church at Philippi, that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that came through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I want to look at three simple truths and looking at Paul's words of how we can be envisioning to be a church that is growing always. How we can be a people, how you can be a, a follower of Jesus who is growing always. And the first First thing I want to look at from this passage is to stay full. He says, you are full of righteousness. Now, imagine a group of people. If we're the called out church, right? Imagine if your love was always growing. Now, I, if you're like me, I'm like, uh, I, I, I need some help on that. Because sometimes I run out of love. 
Okay, and, and, I, and I, blame, I blame it on other people. I say, they're, they're just exhausted my love. Okay, I, I can't, I can't, I, I've loved them so much and, and I can't do it anymore and, and I run out of love. He says that your love would abound to overflow. He says, your love may abound more and more. That would always be growing that it would always be growing, and that God's love in you would fill you to the point that it flows out of you on other people. That's the way it's supposed to look. But honestly, that's not how it looks, right? It looks like, I know the love of God for me. Thank you, God, for your grace. I've done it again. I'm here praying the same prayer. I'm asking forgiveness for the same thing again. Lord, thank you for your love that abounds on me all the time. How many of you have been following Jesus? You've experienced the love of God in your life. It's overwhelming to experience over and over again the love of God. And he's saying, I'm praying for your love. Not just the love of God. I'm praying for your love to abound more and more. Well, how is that possible? He says that you would would have not just a love that's overflowing, that you have God's love that fills you and then impacts everyone around you. It isn't your love that you have for everyone. I'm not running out of love because God is infinite and he is deeper and he is wider than you can reach and deeper than you can imagine and higher than you could ever see. And God's love in you never runs out. Never runs out. So what does that look like? Well, he says not not just any love, by the way. He said it's an exact kind of love. He says with knowledge and discernment. How many people you know that you've learned this in life, that if you're going to love people in this world, you're going to be hurt by people? Yeah, you can give a big amen on that. Because we've all been hurt by people. And the more you love them, isn't it amazing that the more you love them, the more you get hurt? I've, I've talked to pastors about this and a, a lot, and you know, we we it, it when people leave your church or whatever, they say, you know, don't take it personally. Well, there is only one other thing other than my wife and my children that I take as personal. It's my church family. I take it personally. I. I I, I love. Now, I'm not begrudging and I'm not holding a grudge against anyone this morning. But when you pour out your love on people, they, it may work for them, it may not work for them. But here's what Paul is saying. My prayer is that your love may abound over and over and over again. And here's what I tell pastors. Listen, I would rather pastor with a heart and put my heart on, on the table to be stepped on and spit on than minister without a heart. Because that's the other option. The other option is back away. The other option is don't put your heart out there. We do that in relationships. We get hurt by relationships. What do we do? We pull back, right? That's not going to happen again. Been there, done that. I'm good. Got the t-shirt. Let's move on. But we move on. And we lose a little bit of our heart in the next relationship, don't we? We protect it. We guard it. He's saying, this is what I want for you. I want you, my prayer is that your love would abound more and more, but here's how it would abound. It would abound with knowledge and discernment. That God give you knowledge and discernment. When you know what's happening in a relationship, you feel someone pulling away, you feel someone hurting you, or they're lashing out on you, that you would have discernment from God to know what in the world is going on. Because he says, hey, let my peace guard your heart and your mind. If you, you don't have to guard it, I will guard it, God says. I will let my love abound in you again and again, relationship after relationship after relationship. I will let you minister, be in relationship. I will let you 
be in community with all of your heart that if it comes from me, it will never stop loving, but I want you to have some discernment. You know, I don't think God wants us to be a doormat, to be kicked on and uh, spit on. And uh, I, he put really good boundaries in place. In fact, he, he said to the church, like if, if someone's offended you, go to that person and, and then go to them again. Bring other people. Don't stop going to them. Uh, this is a command from God that Jesus said, this is my playbook. Here it is. If there's a relationship broken, go to that person. Go and keep trying to love them. But if they are not hearing you, and then they're not hearing others, then he says, hey, you need to stay focused and put me first and keep walking forward. That's discernment. But I don't walk away with my heart closed. I walk away with that person in God's hands and saying, God, because he says to treat them like, uh, like the world then, well, guess what? We're supposed to do with the world. Love them. So you don't get a pass from loving them. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And you're like, oh, this is, this is intense. Hey, 2022, baby, let's go. All right? It's intense, all right? God, I, in fact, I can't wait. Man, I hate to, to do this to you on, in the very sermon that I'm giving to you now because this is good stuff. But, but, man, next week, God's put so much stuff in my heart on this series. I can't wait to share it with you. And next week, I, I believe actually next week is going to be one of the best sermons I ever preach in my life. Um, I know it's kind of lame to say that right now. Uh, this one's just going to be all right, okay? I'm going to get through it. <laughs> and uh, at the end, you know, I'm hoping God speaks to you. Uh, but, <laughs> but what does it look like to stay full? He says, why? Why do you need this discernment? So that you may approve what is excellent. So that you may approve what is excellent. You know, when you see God working, you know it. I want you to have discernment in your loving relationships. I want your love to abound more and more with discernment so you see what's going on and you can enter that relationship or move on from that relationship or whatever you need to do in that relationship, but never stop loving. Never stop loving. Never shut the door of your heart. Let God guard it. And so that way you can approve what God is doing. You'll see what God is doing. That is what's excellent. There's nothing excellent in this world. We, we touch into excellence when we touch into God. In fact, God created you in his image. So when you see something that's so amazing or someone has accomplished something or someone's done something artistically or they've created something, you're, wow, that's amazing. They've tapped into the heart of God. It's excellence, but we see where God is in the working of it. That's what it looks like to stay full. Pure and blameless, he says. Pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Filled with fruit the fruit of righteousness that only comes through Jesus for his glory. I pray the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now because some of you are out of love. You got nothing to give. Relationships have taken their toll in 2021. And you look at 2022 and go, man, I hope it's better. I hope that people love me more and God, Paul is saying, that's not even my prayer for you. My prayer for you is that you love more. You love more. If your love abounds more and more, then you will be walking around full of his righteousness for his glory. Everywhere you go, you will bring the glory of God to you. Everywhere you, every relationship you're in, you will bring the glory of God into that relationship because God is working in you and you are walking full of him. Famous old hymn, revive us again, right? Revive us again, fill our hearts with your love. God's saying, man, I, I know this. You need God's love in your life, 
but this world needs God's love in it, and we're the ones who are supposed to bring it. And I know you're worn out. I know you're beat up. I know that it has taken its toll on you. <laughs> God says, my prayer is this, that your love would abound more and more. You start approving, you start approving things through this discernment lens that God gives you. And, and when you approve that, you will be filled with the righteousness of God for his glory. And now, now you can walk into relationships knowing that you're not the only one present. It's not your, it's not your love tank you're, you're relying on anymore. That is empty way too fast. Because people around you are supposed to fill it. But that doesn't happen. Okay? I hope you have someone who loves you, but for many people, like, I, I don't know. I got people who take advantage of me. I got people who... Uh, hurt me. I got people who I love a lot. What am I supposed to do about that? He said, the answer is, is, is kind of strange because it doesn't, it really doesn't make a lot of sense logically. Like, let's work on their love some. That would be better. <laughs> hey, I've got a list, pastor. Hey, uh, my spouse needs some help in this category. Okay. I, I got some friends, man, they need some help. What we need to do is teach the world to love. Well, God's saying, hey, welcome to class. You're the teacher. That your love would abound more and more and more. Because it's not your love. It's God working in you with discernment and filling you up with righteousness. Stay full. Here's number two. Live free. Live free. Paul describes this ancient process of Moses when he would go and pray with, uh, with God. And when Moses was in the presence of God, the glory of God would light him up literally. And when he walked out of the presence of God, they would have to put a veil over his face because people couldn't even look at his face because it shined with the glory of God. So they would put this veil and Paul actually uses this in, to the church at Corinth and describes and uses this analogy of the veil over Moses' face is a lot like another kind of veil that he introduces us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. He said, even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. He's saying, the veil that that Moses had that was over his, so that you couldn't see the glory of God, there are now those of us, now in relationship with Jesus, who come to the glory of God, and your heart is veiled. He goes on to explain. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We all who have unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. He's saying, listen, I want to give you something. I want to remind you of what Jesus said, I will send the Comforter, I will send the Holy Spirit to you, and he will be who comes in you. It will be God in you. And so when you come and turn to God, the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to remove the veil so you can, bring, you can see God's glory. And when you remove the veil of your heart and you stop guarding it with all the things that you're guarding it with and you come to God unabandoned and stop putting your expectations on him of what he should do and how he should fit and what it should look like when you worship and what you should act like and you just come to God and say, God, I want your full glory in me. And when you turn to God in this way through the Holy Spirit, he says the veil drops off and you can see God. I don't even know how to communicate this. But I, I have walked with a veil over my heart before. Because I came to God and it became rote and it became uh, 
traditions and it became, I go to church or I, I give money or I, I serve and I, I, I do these things and, 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 I, and this is who I am. Like this is, I, I, I'm, I'm a minister, I'm, I'm a servant of God and I just keep, keep doing this. But as I don't, as I do the things of God, sometimes this veil can come over me and I'm not seeing his glory. Because I'm doing the things of God, but I'm not spending, I'm not turning to God. There's a difference. You might be doing the things of God. You might be joining us online or in person this morning. You're coming to church. Perfect attendance 2022. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm doing the things of God, but it doesn't mean I'm turning to God. And he's saying there's a difference. Those who turn to God, the veil is broken. And the Holy Spirit says, now you can live free. Now you can see things and see God's glory like you've never seen it before. Now, Scripture teaches that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the part of God that lives in us is the Holy Spirit. But he also, Scripture teaches, as as, uh, Pastor Tony talked about in worship, that we can be filled with his Spirit. We can can ask for more of his Holy Spirit. You know, there is, God is never ending. You can never come to God and go, God, have you given me enough? You never come to God and go, God, you know, I feel like I've got a lot of you. Um, I feel like I'm good. He's saying that you would be full, abounding in his love, and Paul says that you would be free to see the glory of God like you've never seen it before because the Holy Spirit, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit is like the red pill of the kingdom. Matrix fans out there, I don't know. You don't know. You, don't, you know if you know. Uh, but it's, it's this removal that you see the world the way it really is. And you see the kingdom of God at work where it's working. Imagine turning to God and seeing his glory for yourselves and walking in freedom that I'm not bound by how much love I get or lack of love, that, I, I, that I'm not bound by this, that I see the real kingdom of God at work. I see what's going on. He says that, you know, we don't fight flesh and blood, Paul said. You know, the battle that's happening in you is actually not a battle that's just on the surface and the circumstances that are going wrong. There's actually another battle happening behind the scenes. And in order for you to see it, you need the Holy Spirit's freedom for your eyes, the veil to be removed. And this becomes the moment when you see God and the kingdom at work everywhere you look, you know what is the kingdom of heaven being built and you know the kingdom of this world which you're in but not of. And you recognize it. You recognize it. And this is a beautiful picture to me of what Paul says of what it looks like to live free. What it looks like to live free. The Holy Spirit was given to us to free our minds, to clear our vision, to always see God at work. And this freedom can be yours. I love what the ESV translation, the way it says it. And we all, with unveiled face now, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, one degree of glory to another. So I don't know what, where I'm at on the glory scale, Shane. Uh, I don't know. He's just saying, hey, just one degree at a time. Never stop growing. This is what it looks like to never stop growing. Oh, I'm pressing in the Holy Spirit. I'm not seeing all that, Pastor. I'm not seeing all that. Hey, what he's saying is keep turning to God. Keep turning to him. Keep turning to him, and he's going to remove the veil. The Holy Spirit is going to be setting you free. If you keep turning to him, if you keep pressing in, if you keep going to him over and over and over again in 2022, you get up and do it again with the Lord because he is setting you free one degree of his glory after one degree after another degree 
When Moses stood on the mountain, he said, uh, God, let me see you. He said, I, I can pass by, but you cannot see me. If you see all of me, it, you, would, you wouldn't even be able to survive it. The glory of God would blow your mind literally. And he said, but I'll pass by and cover you. I'll pass by just so you can see the aftermath of my glory. And when Moses first came down off the mountain, it was the very first time that they saw his face glowing with the glory of God. I wonder what people see when they see me. Well, you've got such a glow about you. Uh, I just, I love your attitude. or I love anything. Like, oh, well, we can put that on. You can put that on. You can just listen to some Tony Robbins and some self-help things and positive thinking and, and hey, God made our minds this way. We can, we can do a lot of great things. We can do all of this stuff, but you cannot duplicate what the Holy Spirit can do in you. There is no step process. There is no, there is no God, pray this one and then this one and then this one, or this is what it looks like. Oh, now I've got it figured out. He's saying one degree of glory at a time, and if we keep turning to him, he will keep unveiling you so you, your face and your heart so that you can see God truly for who he is. 2022 doesn't have to look like 2021. In fact, it shouldn't because in my life, I am always, always growing I am remaining full, I'm staying full, I'm living free. And lastly, James, the brother of Jesus, reminds us to be perfect. Any perfectionists out there? Like, there it is, there it is, your permission right there. Um, this, is what, this is what it said. Uh, James said this, but let the patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. All right, before you get really excited, perfectionists, okay, um, this, is, this word in the Greek is simply saying this, that you would be completely mature. And in fact, you would never stop growing in your maturity. You would never stop growing closer to God. Like, I've been following God for 20, 30 years. Say, I, how much closer can I get? If you've been following God that long, here's what you've learned about God. He is infinite, omnipresent, omnipotent. He is, he is never ending. As far as the east is from the west, you cannot see him as the deepest ocean. You cannot experience him. You can keep pressing into God, and he will never stop revealing himself to you. There is more for you to see in 2022 than you saw in 2021, but you've got to press into the right place. This is what it looks like to live free and, and be perfect, that I'm always in a process of being mature, that I'm never ending, that there is more for you to learn. You've been following God your whole life. There is more for you to learn. You're just walking in. You're not even sure what you believe. There is more for you to learn, not just cognitively, because God is spirit, and he can touch places in your heart and life that a book or something you process cannot possibly get to. Some of us have been walking around with wounds in our hearts for years, trying to figure out a way to fix it. <laughs> and he's saying, hey, turn to me. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Don't look any other places. You can just stop right here because I am never ending. If you always want to grow, then grow with me because I never stop and I never end. And I always will be growing in you till you are perfect, till you are complete, lacking nothing, until everything you need is in God in your relationship with him. Hey, we got the kids in here. Any kids in here today? You guys still with me? Okay, you know what? The world is gonna teach you guys. They're gonna teach you about, hey, you need things to make you complete. Like, you're not complete enough if you're not an athlete. If you're not a really amazing dancer, look at, I mean, if you're not growing as a dancer, what are you doing? If you're not growing as an athlete, what are you doing? If you're not growing as a student, what are you doing? I mean, come on. You gotta fulfill your potential. Hey, kids, listen to me. Jesus and the Holy Spirit in you will, is, is the only one who can find your true potential. A teacher can't do it. A coach can't do it. 
I can't do it as a parent. Your parents can't do it. I know, it's hard to hear. You thought they were perfect. <laughs> God says that you would be complete in me, lacking nothing. That's what it looks like to live full. But here's the interesting thing, that the G- James, the brother of Jesus, gives us the context for this kind of growth. Notice he says that, hey, let patience have its perfect work. Well, that's the end of the context. Let's look at the context in which this would grow. Because I would think that if I were growing, that if I were growing someone, I would want a good environment for them to grow in. Don't you want that as a parent? Any parents in here? Okay, we got kids in here. I hope we got parents in here. (laughs) Something's going on, okay? Uh, You got parents. Hey, as a parent, you want to provide a perfect environment, as best an environment that you can for your kids to grow. You try to protect them from all the things that can happen to them. You try to protect them from the world and, and, and the, the hurt and the pain. And we try to, our best to create an environment because in our, in our perspective, the best place to grow this incubate, these children, is in the cleanest, perfect, best environment possible. Now, I don't want to mess with you too much, but James disagrees So buckle up, mom and dad, kids, okay? This is what he says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. That's the perseverance that completes you. That's the perseverance when it has its perfect work, starts completing you, but the trial comes before the triumph. That there is, there is weakness that comes before the strength. That there is an environment of being tested and challenged that is actually the environment that is perfect for growth. Now, this is very revealing to me in my life. Because if I ever wondered why I stopped growing, it's because I stopped wanting trials. I'm not stupid. I mean... I, I'm not, and some weirdo is like, I can't wait for more trials to come. I hope 2022 just brings even more. 2020, nothing. 2021, crazy. 2022, worst year of my life. Can't wait. Count it all joy. He doesn't mean, like, be stupid. He's not, he's not saying, you know, lose all logic in this. He understands that this doesn't make logical sense. But the perfect environment for growth is trials. You know, some of the greatest Christians I've ever met with or mentored in me in my life, the difference between them and me has been this. And this is just my observation. But the difference between those Christians that I admire, like, wow, like, oh my gosh. Like, I could just be like this person. You know, they don't ever expect the trials to stop. They don't. They actually accept the fact that this is life, that this is hard, that it gets better one day, but, like, I'll be in heaven when that happens. Like, the getting better isn't in this world, (laughs) This world is dying, and it has been since sin entered the world, and that's just creation, how it works, and it's getting worse. Like, well, I don't know, man. It is worse than it ever has. Yes, it is. Guess what? It's going to get worse. And I know it's not very self-help and not very pep talk of me in 2022 to start the year off this way, and I apologize, but I really don't because this is reality. And some of us need to wake up and stop expecting tomorrow for all the trials to go away. In fact, we need to stop praying for all the trials to leave us and let God do his perfect work in us and let God do the work in us. 
Lament, cry out to God, tell him you can't take it anymore. I cannot take another loss. I cannot take another relationship loss. I cannot take another setback. I cannot take it. God, lament to him, pour out your heart to him, but turn to him because he will pull the veil off and he will show you the work that he's doing. Yeah. He's not saying be weird and be like, it's the worst day of my life. So great. Count it all joy. He's saying, I, I, you know what? If circumstances can bring you joy, guess what they can do? They can take it away. And the enemy always, and you want to know what's going on behind the scenes? The enemy Satan himself, who works against God, who's always counter behind the scenes working against him, he wants you to think that real joy is something that's not real. He wants you to think that if you get more of this, if you look like this better, or if you do more of this, or if you make more money, if you succeed in greater ways, if you fulfill the fulfillment of my heart, and I just like, oh, he, he wants you to think that that's the ticket. He's saying, count it all joy. When you fall into these trials, the Navy SEALs have a saying, they say no one really rises to a challenge. It's kind of weird. Here's why. They fall to their level of training. They don't rise to a challenge. They fall to their level of training. Whatever the baseline of your training is and whatever the baseline of the fundamentals of of you uh, practicing and turning to the Lord and getting in in his face and him getting in your face, that is building a base that gets higher and higher and higher and higher in your life. And now the fall is not so long in the trial. Yeah, I still need a moment. I still got some things with you, God, that I got to talk about. But I can tell you that, God, I know you are working in me. And now the baseline has risen so that my trials and my fall is to the level of my training in him. One of the greatest golfers in the world, Jack Nicholas. If you don't know golf, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's okay. If you do, it's awesome. But... Uh, he dominated the golf, the professional golf scene in the late 60s, all through the 70s, and even into the 80s. It was just crazy. He's won uh, 100 pro tournaments and 18 uh, world championships. He's, it's, it's, that's still a record that's never been broken. But the great Jack Nicholas, who was struggling in the 70s and trying to figure out how to get his game back wasn't looking for a new swing. In fact, he went back to his original teacher that taught him golf and said, teach me golf again. Everything from the most basic things, how I hold the club, where I stand, whatever. I want you to teach me like I've never heard this game before. I need to get back to the basics. I need to get back to the fundamentals. Listen, this is really simple, okay? Pray fast, Read his word. Pray. Come to God and and pray and pour out your heart. Spend more time with him. Like, it's like, it's not going to get like this different formula that's going to be like, wow, did you hear this one thing? I've been hearing about this one, man, this one program is amazing. Like, yeah, that's lighting people up in the spiritual world. That's amazing. Like, yeah, I know. However we want to shape it or or look at it, it's, it's the same playbook. Discipleship Jesus' playbook for discipleship was actually relationship. It was a class of relationship, and he just had people walk with him. I'm going to be honest with you. As a church, this is one of the areas that we've suffered in. Because I look at 2020 as revealing what was there, and I say to myself as a pastor, I don't know if we're discipling people. (laughs) Because if this is going to blow up your faith, um, and it's not like it's a little deal. It's a big deal, and I get that. And there's so many issues, and I'm not trying to simplify it to nothing and, and minimize it. But I'm saying, if this is going to blow up my faith, blow up my family, blow up my church family, blow up relationships, what fundamentals have you been studying about God? 
I mean, the source, just because I feel a certain way doesn't mean that that is truth. He says, I want you to have discernment in truth. And it doesn't come from my emotions. My emotions reveal things that are happening in me. It actually comes from truth. And the only way for me to discern is to know truth. Counterfeiters do not study counterfeit bills. The FBI does not study counterfeit bills. They study the real bill so that when they see it different, they know it's different. You need to study the truth of God. I was listening to Henry Cloud the other day. Here's some really, you like, anybody like practical suggestions? Let me end my sermon with some practical suggestions, okay? If you guys like practical, here it is. It's three things. It's really simple. Henry Cloud, who's an amazing counselor, Christian counselor, world-renowned, said, number one, have some quiet time. Number one, have some quiet. Just clear your head. He gave examples of people who would just go and look at a pond or go and look at water and not think. Take a moment in your day. Uh, I, my counselor does this with me. He says, hey, before your next meeting, after, because I have lots and lots and lots of hard meetings back to back. It's like, you got to clear your head. Like, you got to create a space and just stop thinking for a moment. Just clear your head. Now, for me, water helps with that or scenery or... A lot of us have different things that help you clear your head. I'm not, I'm not saying fill it and veg so that I'm not thinking. I'm saying actually quiet myself. So that pauses your mind and allows you to observe your thinking, to think about the way you're thinking. It sounds kind of weird, but to think about the way you're thinking. The psalmist said, God, examine Psalm 139. Examine my thoughts. See if there is any bad patterns, any way in me, any patterns that are not in line with you. Examine the way I'm thinking. Hey, you keep saying this over and over to yourself. You wake up in the middle of the night saying this over and over, and I want to talk more about this next week of what we do with our minds in renewal, but... but you keep saying this over and over. Who's saying that? Does God say that? Does God say you're a failure? Does God say that you're not going to succeed? Does God say you're not going to be able to do this? Does God say he's tired of it? You need to get your act together? Get it together in 2022? Is that, is that, is that what God says? He wants you to turn to him and give, reveal his glory to you. He's not, he's not looking for what you think he's looking for. But more time with Thinking about my, how am I thinking? Measure it against truth. Make a list if you need to. If you like any list people, go back to the perfect people, okay? And check that list off. Make the list. Make the list. Of, here's the, all the things, here's the things I'm thinking. And then make another list. Here's what God says. Compare the two. It's not rocket science. It, it's just compare it against truth. Observe a thinking. And then last, enlarge your view. This is why we need to spend time in scripture. This is why we need to spend time in truth. This is why we need to saturate ourselves. David said that I meditate on his word day and night. That I, I meditate on his word day and night because he's constantly renewing me and, and placing truth in me. And I've got to measure it against. I've got to measure it against the truth of God versus what I've been hearing, what I've been seeing what I've been experiencing this week, I need to measure that against the truth of God or else it'll take over my thoughts. This is why time in the world is like, time in the word of God is so important. You say, I'm just starting, I don't know. I mean, just spend a few minutes a day. But I mean, come on, guys. You guys have been following Jesus for a long time. A few minutes a day? I mean, <laughs> I don't wanna, I say, you need to start where you're at. If it's five minutes a day, start there. But don't stop there and go, well, I'm doing it now. I, I do it. Now I'm doing it. I figured it out. This is what I do. I read the Bible every day. I have the verse of the day come up, and I read it, and it's great. Um, it's like, no, no, no. Keep growing that. Read it more. Well, then 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Read it for 30 minutes. Pray for 30 minutes. Pray for 30 minutes, pastor. All right, start with five. It's, God's not disappointed when you show up ever. He's not mad at you because you didn't show up. He's that parent who goes, oh, I'm so glad you're here. 
Let me tell you a thing or two. No, that's me as a parent, okay? I got some bones to pick with you people. God's like, ah, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. This is what it looks like to always be growing. But I think some of us get lulled into this world and, and get lulled into, I don't want to say failure because like that, as if success versus failure, but we get lulled into thinking I'm good. We get complacent, simply uh, said. We get complacent. We get to the point where we're like, okay, I'm good. I've, I've grown this. I've done this. I've, I've done this over and over. And we get tired of failing, so to speak, at this. So we lower the bar and we go, oh, this is what it looks like. Pray for a few minutes. Read for a few minutes. This is what I do. And so I, I'm fasting. I'm giving up a little something to you. I'm trying to do what the church is doing. Uh, and, and you're trying to do some kind of, find some kind of list or something. And he's saying, hey, just start where you're at and grow it from there. And don't be, don't be lulled by your own shortcoming or your own, once again, here I am again, praying the same prayer. Um, you guys know what this is, right? It's a light bulb. It's not the typical round one, but it's a clear one. I wanted you to be able to see um, what that clear one looks like, but we all know who invented the light bulb. Kids, who invented the light bulb? Yes! Smart kids in here. Thomas Edison invited the light bulb. Do you know that Thomas Edison failed over a thousand times trying to create a light bulb? over a thousand times. If Thomas Edison stopped, we don't have the light bulb. I want to invite our band out to finish, and I want to use Thomas Edison's words to just think about how we would apply this to our spiritual walk. He says this, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Thomas Edison has over 1,100 patents, more than any inventor ever in history. And I can't imagine. I don't know what 1,000 times 1,100 is, but (laughs) that's a lot. I don't know how many times he failed, and I don't know what that number is. But I know this, that 1,000 times failing in God's world, he is infinite. And he just needs your prayer right now to say, God, come, awaken me again. Awaken your people. This is what revival looks like. Revival looks like constantly growing, constantly turning to God and having the veil removed. And I see him differently this year than I ever saw him the year before or the year before. God wants to reveal himself to you. And you say, I already know him. (laughs) No, you don't. You cannot know someone who is infinite, who is never ending. You can never fully know. He's saying, but if you'll stay in my process and you'll stay with me, I will keep working that process to it completes to maturity. You will know what it is to live to to be full. You know what it is to live free. You will know what it is to constantly be growing and revival. Revive us again and again and again and again. Oh God, awaken me again. Awaken me again. God, 2022, I'm I don't want it to be anything like 2021. When we say that, we normally mean all the circumstances. Instead, God, what I'm saying to you is, Lord, I want you to come awaken inside of me. Greater than you ever have. You don't even know how close you are. Don't stop. Let him meet you where you are right now. Would you take a moment and just reflect on that and stand with me? Just reflect on this and make this your prayer right now. Make this your prayer. The prayer of your heart, the prayer of revival. God, awaken, come awaken your people. Come awaken your city. Come awaken us as your people. God, I pray that you would pour it out on us. Pour yourself out on us. In Jesus' name, would you make this your prayer? Come.
Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people, come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out. to these basics that you have with me and time with you. And God, I pray that you would revive me again. Lord, I'm thankful that revival is never just about me. It's about your work in me that I can bring to others. And Lord, I pray that you would bring revival to our city. I pray, oh God, that you would continue the work in us, that we would be a church always growing. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.